Good morning, everyone. Today is the 2nd of December. I'm going to be turning 70 years old this month, so I'm not getting any younger. None of us are. <laughs> Mark is reading in the chapter 26 of the Holy Spirit by Arthur W. Paint. You can get a copy of this book if you go to Amazon.com. Uh, also, I'd like to encourage you, if you get a chance, go to either Facebook or Sermon Audio or YouTube or any of the other social platforms, Truth Social, um, Blogger, Tumblr, Reddit, Twitter, and listen to the devotional that I did this morning on the 19th chapter of Acts regarding education. I think you'll find this enlightening. Holy Spirit, chapter 26, part 4. Glory of the Lord is further manifested in the glass of the gospel in which God has made a full and yet more blessed revelation of his moral perfections than he did at Sinai. And the gospel necessarily implies that presupposes the following things. First, the broken law and its transgressors are utterly unable to repair its breach. Second, that God graciously determined to save the people from his curse. Third, that he purposes to do so without making light of sin, without dishonoring the law, and without depriving his holiness. Otherwise, so far from the gospel being the best news of all, it would herald the supreme calamity. How this is affected by and through Christ, the gospel makes known in his own Son. God shines forth in radiant splendor through Jesus Christ, the brightness of glory, expressed image of his person, and Christ the veil is rent. The Holy of Holies is exposed to its fullest view, for now we behold the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, in Corinthians 4, 6. The gospel is displayed not only the amazing grace and infinite mercy, but also mainly the manifold wisdom of God. Therein we learn how grace is exercised righteously, how mercy is bestowed honorably, how transgressors are pardoned justly. God did not deem it suitable to the honor of his majesty sovereignly. Hardened sinners without the satisfaction being offered himself, and therefore did he appoint a mediator to magnify the law and make it honorable. The great design of the incarnation, life, and death of Christ was to demonstrate in the most public manner that God was worthy of all that love, honor, and obedience which the law required. And that sin was as great as great and evil as the punishment threatened and supposed. At the heart of the glorious gospel of Christ is the cross, and there we see all the divine perfection is fully displayed. In the death of the Lord Jesus, the law was magnified. Divine wholeness vindicated. Sin discountenanced. The sinner saved. Grace glorified. And Satan defeated. So the glory of the Lord be so plainly revealed in the two full glass of the law and the gospel, yet the unregenerate appreciated not concerning the one that said, even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts, in Corinthians 3.15. The lot we read, in whom the God in this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, the image of God, should shine unto them, in Corinthians 4.4. 4. The unregenerate are blind to the loveliness of the divine character, not that they have no eyes to see with, but that they have deliberately closed them, Matthew 13, 15. Not that they are not intellectually convinced of divine perfections, but that their hearts are unaffected thereby. It is because man is a fallen, depraved, and vicious creature that he is not won by the beauty of wholeness. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Clear as Proof, possible proof, clear possible proof of this was furnished when the Word became flesh and tabernacle among men. Those who had been born of God, John 1.13, could say, We beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, John 4, John 1.14. But different, but different indeed was it with those who were left in their natural state. They, notwithstanding their education, culture, and religion, were so far from discerning 
any form or comeness in Christ that they cry, Thou art a Samaritan, half the demon, John 8, 48. Yet it is plain as a sun being that the blindness of the Pharisees was due neither to the lack of necessary faculties nor to the one of outward opportunities, but entirely to the perverted state of their minds and the depraved condition of their hearts, which is altogether of the criminal nature. From what has just been pointed out, then it is plain when the apostle declares that we all with open face behold as in a glass of glory of the Lord, 2 Corinthians 3.18, that a miracle of grace had been wrought to them. The spiritual blindness consists in the absence of relish for holy beauty, which blindness is capable of being greatly increased and confirmed, confirmed through the exercise and influence of the various corruptions of the wicked heart and what Satan augment, augments by all means in his power, a wicked heart, and what Satan augments, augments by Satan all. And when Satan augments by all means his power is so spiritual size of the soul delighting in itself and divine the spiritual things regeneration there is begotten the soul a holy taste of the heart now goes out after God and his Christ. This is referred to in scripture in various ways as the fulfillment of that promise and the Lord thy God like will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. To love the Lord thy God, Deuteronomy 36, this new relish for spiritual things which is begotten in the soul by the immediate operation of the Spirit is also fulfillment of a new heart. Also will I give you a new spirit that I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, Ezekiel 36, 26. And if I will give them... A heart to know me that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people. Jeremiah twenty four seven. So also the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Isaiah thirty five five. And Lydia, we read, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken to Paul. Acts sixteen fourteen. To the Corinthian saints, the apostle wrote, "For God, who command the light to shine out of darkness, has shine in our hearts." Second Corinthians four six. Consequence thereof, the happy subject to this work of the divine grace, perceive and realize the holy character of God, and are enamored with his perfections. But we all, that is all, who have supernaturally brought from death into life, of the darkness, into God's marvelous light, with open face or unveiled face, that is, in the Greek, is the revised version. The revised version translates it, that is, with hearts from which the veil of prejudice, Second Corinthians 3.15, has been removed from which that covering cast over all people, Isaiah 25, 7. The covering of enmity against God has been destroyed. Beholding, note carefully the perfect the present sense, present tense, where it is a continuous action, which is here in view as in a glass or mirror, namely, the twofold glass, the law of the gospel, the glory of the Lord, that is his communicable perfections, his moral character are shaped and to the same image, this clause it is which next engage our careful attention. Following our usual custom, let us first give a brief definition and then amplify the same. To be shaped to the same image means that that means that the regenerated soul becomes conformed with the divine character that angel principles and affections are wrought in his heart, bringing him into harmony with the perfections of God. This must be the case for since the Bible enlightened souls have arose for holy beauty. For such beauty as there is in the character of God, then it, then it necessarily follows that every divine truth as it comes into their view will appear beautiful and will accordingly beget and excite holy affections corresponding with its nature. Or more specifically, as the heart is occupied in the several perfections of God exhibited in the law and in the gospel corresponding desires and tornations will be awakened and, and exercised by that soul. It would imply a contradiction. Suppose any heart should be charmed with a character just opposite to its own. The carnal mind is enmity against God, resenting his authority, disliking his holiness, hating his sovereignty, and condemning his justice at a word. It is immediately opposed to his glorious it shines in a glass wall. And the gospel, but one who has been divinely enlightened loves the truth because he has the frame of heart heart answerable thereto 
Just as the unregenerate soul loves the world because it suits its depraved taste, the regenerate discerns and feels the laws righteous and requiring what it does, even though it condemns him for his disobedience. He perceives, too, that the gospel is actually suited to his needs and that its precepts are wise and excellent. Thus, he is brought into conformity with the one and in compliance with the other. Thank you, Mark. Hope you all have a good day today and a good weekend. We'll probably see you Monday.